Hello, Internet. Ah, hey, you! Pay attention! Welcome to another Let's Play by me, Crowley9. This time we'll be taking on an Amiga game called Cadaver. In case you couldn't read. Oh, this is uh, one of those dear old games from my childhood, and I still, still enjoy this very much. So let's take a look at the story so far. We start at chapter 13, and our hero is Caradoc. He's a dwarf. He's had all sorts of adventure which we, we shall not be seeing in this game. But it's nice to have a hero with some history for a change. <sighs> Damn Bioware. And he goes to an unknown land, here's about a new quest. And he meets a gang of old friends. Bum, 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 bum. On the border of a vast miasma swamp. Miasma is a fun word. <coughs> yeah, and humans are bastards. Oh, Caradoc does not have his axe with him. Hmm. Yeah, please go on. I can't speed this up. If I press the button, it will skip this and the game will start loading. <coughs> yeah, he heads to a cave by a boat. The manual goes in a bit more detail, explaining that the this rock is actually in the swamp, so he's been going through the swamp by a boat, so that's why he's in a boat, or has a boat. <coughs> and we are going to go and take on a guy called Dianos, or Dianos, or Dianos. I think I'll go with Dianos, it's easiest for me to pronounce. <coughs> I think that this is the end of the prologue. Yep. And now the credit credits start going. This was made by Bitmap Brothers, who made many wonderful games for the Amiga. And later on they made one wonderful game for the PC called Z or Z, just the letter. And we will, of course, be going with Angler. Ah, uh, start the game and. <coughs> so, well, the, the data is expanding. Keeps on expanding. What will it do once it has expanded to its fullest? You don't want to know. So oh, here we are. This is a isometric. I guess it would be classified as an action adventure game. Here's a Caradoc who has either he has very stumpy legs or he's wearing an oversized breastplate. I'm guessing he has is wearing an oversized breastplate, considering how stumpy his arms look. <coughs> so. Uh, so this game mostly is um, just a joystick and one button interface. You normally press a button, <coughs> Caradoc jumps. If you go up to an item, it'll you press the button as you enter that this menu of <coughs> well interaction options in the bottom left. Here we have a drinking. And the question mark is gets your description of the thing. 
So that's a barrel of water. And this allows you to pull stuff, to push, just to walk against them. And the joystick gets you back to just walking. And here's Caradox boat, which is somehow damaged. And here is an item we shall be carrying throughout the game. The diary, which pretty much just gives you your st status. <coughs> Health, gold experience, level. I guess that's actually the level of the game, not the level of the character. Well, that the num numerical level is the level of the game, and the verbal level is the level of the character. Oh, <coughs> and this sword icon, it allows to you to use the item as a weapon. They are only throwing or shooting weapons in the game. Here we have a gold coin of the rule of Lord Carolus. So, about that um, backstory, which the manual explains more. We are heading into a castle where once upon King Wolf III ruled. He had a half brother by the name of Lord Carolus, or maybe it was step brother. Anyway, King Wolf, once he took the throne, he banished his half brother, but who was Lord Carolus. But Carolus was not pleased about this, so he eventually headed back uh, to come to the throne with the help of Dianos, who was some kind of uh, chancellor, I think, and also a mage. And, well, I think Carolus got Wolf the Third killed, and then Dianos got Carolus killed, and now Dianos is just running the place as an evil wizard. So we take the gold. Oh yeah, you press space, you get this display of your inventory. <coughs> now we have seven gold and one point of experience to our name. Pressing the enter lets you open up a <coughs> bigger inventory screen. Well, just having one item there doesn't demonstrate that all that well. Let's get this pickaxe. There you can see more. This spreads out to uh, at most uh, four items across and four items down. But and it's also scrolls that you can at most carry 32 items. And that sound tells us that this doorway here is locked. This door is also locked. Oh no, whatever shall we do? Also, you can jump on levers and other sti Pretty much any item that sticks out the slightest bit, you can jump, you can stand on. Physics in this game can be fun. Oh, there's a lever on the wall. We pull it, and the door is unlocked. Hooray! We solved our first puzzle! This calls for jumping for joy. I think if you time it... Yeah, there you go. Time it <coughs> right, you can jump back... Well, facing... Well, jump backwards, facing away from the direction you're jumping. Also, <coughs> there's fun all over the place, you can do anything about it. And avoid random sea monsters shooting at you or spitting. Now here is a proper weapon. <coughs> yeah, you all have a limited number of <coughs> of uses. Well, pretty much. Well, you find spell items and potions and weapons, which all have a limited number of uses. Uh, let's ready this. And now when we press the fire button, well, let's find an actual monster. Like this thing that looks sort of like a living floating sea mine. Now if you press the fire button, you will throw a single stone instead of the whole bag. Unfortunately, that monster is stuck behind those barrels. See, water potion. 
Oh yeah. You'll have to wait for that description to go away. The little quirk of the game is that if you try examining <coughs> multiple items of the same type in a row, it, uh, for some reason the description doesn't come out properly. And back here we have another pickaxe, but we already have one. But if we jump on top of the barrel, we can get this charm. Or, uh, well, looks like a ring to me. And that was worth 20 gold. Also a good of bit... Let me get a good of bit of experience. Well... <coughs> ah, and there is a, ja a big spider. This one, unlike the previous monster, doesn't head straight towards Karadok, but walks around in a bit predetermined pattern. And here we have a runic stone. <coughs> oh yeah, also about the interface, but the bottom right stuff gives you the day, which which just passes with time. Then there's the item you are interacting with, and the, a little description of the room you are in, or rather the name of the room. <clears throat> and that thing above the three lines of text is actually Caradoc's health indicator. Well, let's take a look. Uh, this is a turn monster spell. Which, uh, well, it you cast it and it makes every room monster in the room <coughs> run away from you. Okay, now let's try to hit that spider. <coughs> bit too light. There we go. Small but difficult to hit. Also another thing. Pressing F1 gives you a map. Handy. And apart from that. Pressing S <coughs> allows you to save. Now an unusual thing about this game. Uh, you have to pay, pay with in-game money to save your game. Now we have sacks of stones here. Um, <coughs> let's let's try to get away from that maggot. Okay, and I could show another thing about the game here. Yeah. Normally the maggot... Actually, I guess that maggot pretty much moves around that random. So let's see if we can... Oh, actually I... Looks like the maggot is... Oh. oh. Well, <coughs> that happens if you just walk into a monster. Well, often if the monster dies and you lose health. That was that was fortunately a very very meek, weak monster. So that only took off one hit point. Also, do not walk on the water. It hurts. That lost 16 hit points. Or cost 16 hit points. And now we can see a bit more of the inventory. Oh, inventory system. The gem bears the name Carolus, which, well, that's about all. <coughs> <coughs> well, as I was, oh, as I was saying, but got interrupted by the maggots' behavior. Now the monsters. At least the ones which are normally <coughs> had to had home in on Karadok. When you first enter a room for a couple of, for a second or two, the monster actually is, will move away from Karadok. So um, I guess it's made so that it, the game avoids a situation where you enter a room and you are immediately swamped by monsters and killed before you get to do anything. <coughs> But you can also uh, take advantage of this feature to hurt monsters. 
I repeat it, Leah. Leaving and entering the room. Ah, nothing in there. Ah, oh, stamina potion. That means in this game, it's a healing potion. And on top of this, 20 feet of rope. Also, funny. For some reason, <coughs> in this room, there will be fungi growing around. And I think this is actually the only place in the entire game where that happens. Ah, there's a helm. Ah. A simple iron key. A loaf of bread, I suppose. Let's check. Okay, and nothing hidden behind these sacks. <coughs> and we've explored a good deal by now. Also, this maggot respawns, which is frankly unusual for this game. Okay, <coughs> I thought we could go there, but okay, nine points now. So let's get to full. I thought we could go there, but actually I was wrong. <coughs> okay, when you find a small key like this, usually it means it's a door key or a chest key. The kind of keys that go into big keyholes that you have to put in separately. Those are usually bigger. In this case, it opened or unlocked this door. And, well, Mew automatically use chest and door keys when trying to open the chest or walk through a door. And here's another bag of stones. This has 150 stones in it, or rocks. And, uh, hmm. Trying to think what would be a good spot to end this video. Uh, oh, and that little jingle usually means you, well, for one, did something useful, and usually it's, it's accompanied with, uh, with getting a bit of experience. And uh, when you examine a chest, it'll, sh it'll tell you if it's locked. And of course, whether it's open or closed, but you can usually tell that just by looking at it. Well, with your own eyes. And, and here's a new icon for reading. And this, of course, is open and close containers. Now, things you can read, sometimes they have multiple, well, sort of sc mm, pages of text. <coughs> this description in the inventory only shows the fourth, first page of text. So uh, you will have to keep using the read icon to get all of that. Oh, I think I know where we shall end the video. Now, pulling the lever open that door and now we are faced with a wall. How do we get through a wall? Let's try jumping into it and banging Caradoc's head against it. Obviously, it is well protected. Well, that didn't work. Perhaps we shall find out next time.